All right. Wow. Well, I'm very glad to see you too. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, just have this uh, nice towel here. It's very handy. <laughs> Love you guys too. So, <laughs> um, go see Alert. I think there's a, there's a game tonight. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, bef before I start, I'd like to uh, welcome a special guest. Let's see. Please join. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, actually, I, I, believe, I believe Trump actually is um, at, at McDonald's. <laughs> Which is epic. I, I, I just was watching, I just l looking at the video, and like, it's, it's awesome. Um, so, let's see. Is our special guest joining me, or should I perhaps wait a minute? Uh, hello? <laughs> or maybe, maybe I should wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Am I the special guest? Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking, who the hell's the special guest? <laughs> yeah. So, Thanks for the towel. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we don't just need to uh, win the presidency, we also need to win the Senate. So perhaps you... Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, well, thank, thank you, Elon Musk. Let's give him a hand. So. Let's do the terrible towel. I saw, I saw Elon speak in uh, Butler. And the words he said about the American dream slipping away is exactly the reason I'm running for this Senate seat. We've got to save our country, and this is the most important election of our lifetime, right here. Yes. And uh, I'm really honored to be the nominee here. This race is going to end in 16 days. We've got to get people out to vote. It's going to be the difference between winning and losing. And, uh, and listen, everything that you're doing, thank you, and everything all of you are doing is gonna make the difference on November 5th. So thank you for that. And, yeah. you know, this guy has lived the American dream. I've lived the American dream. I was born in Washington County. I grew up in, uh, my dad was from Indiana County. My mom was from Punxsutawney. And I like to say that because Punxsutawney Bob is my opponent who only comes out every six years. He comes out of his hole for a few months, right? And uh, I went to West, I played football, wrestled, grew up uh, working on a family farm, wrestled at West Point, went to the 82nd Airborne Division. I know we got some 82nd guys here. Combat tour in Iraq. And then came back to Pittsburgh and helped run a great company and create hundreds of jobs. So I've lived the American dream. My wife is an immigrant from Cairo, Egypt, came to America, Dina Powell. So we both, and we want to make sure that, we got six kids. That's not as many as him, but we got a lot wow. of kids, right? Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> That's, That's a excellent. lot. We want to make sure the American dream is available for our kids, make sure that freedom, uh, the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, are protected, our Constitution's protected, and save the America we all love for our kids. And this guy's leading the charge. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, so this, it's, it's absolutely essential that we win the Senate and the presidency in order to affect change uh, that, that's important and to protect the Constitution, which is under attack by a lot of Democrats, uh, which is shocking, actually. Uh, and frankly, it's a sedition. Um, so, uh, and yet they, they, they sort of really av openly advocate uh, you know, overturning elements of the Constitution, especially uh, the right to bear arms and, and, and freedom of speech. Uh, it's, it's open sedition, and nothing, nobody does anything about it. But that's why we, we, we have to have a, a, a clean sweep of those who believe in the Constitution. Those who will uphold the Constitution. And, and, and I... I was, just, I was just looking at the data. Um, 
And just in the greater Pittsburgh area, there are about 60,000 registered Republicans who have requested an absentee ballot and have not yet uh, mailed it in. Um, so, 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 so please uh, definitely talk to friends, family, acquaintances, everyone you meet, um, and, and, and just, just get them to, to mail it in or, or put it in a drop box, and you can even hand it in in person. So you can actually go in person uh, tomorrow and hand in your ballot. So you can be super sure it gets there immediately. Uh, so if, you, if, if people don't want to mail it today or use a Dropbox, they can literally hand it in in person tomorrow. Great. Awesome. So, yeah, it would be a real tragedy if, if, those, if, if the ballots that people have are not actually submitted. That's, come on. <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah. 60,000 60, unsubmitted people who've received the ballot, re registered Republicans received the ballot, have not handed it in. Come on, guys. <laughs> do it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So. We got to do it. Yes. Get people to vote. Okay. Am I done? Uh, do, would you like to say anything more? <laughs> uh, well, the uh, thing I'd like to say is that we need every one of you to not only put up signs, but tell 10 people and tell 10 people and get Republicans out to vote, get independents out to vote, get conservative Democrats out to vote, and save our country for our kids. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eli. Thanks for watching. Right. Thank you. All right. Woohoo. So, uh, and then the, the next thing we'd like to do is to announce uh, today's winner of the million dollar prize. So, it's Christine Fischel. Would you like to come up? Oh, up there? Oh, okay. So, uh, as, as you may know, um, every day, every day from now until the election, uh, we're giving out a million dollar prize uh, that is, and all you have to do is sign a petition in support of the Constitution. It's, it's very straightforward. Uh, you don't even have to vote. You don't have to vote. You just have to sign a petition saying you believe in the Constitution, which if you already believe in the Constitution, you're just signing something you already believe, and you can win a million dollars. That's awesome. I guess uh, the seat was kind of far away from the stage. <laughs> so. No. You're so <laughs> most welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Is there anything you want to say? Uh, well, thank you so much for. I mean, I truly believe everything you're doing, yeah. truly, you don't need to be doing, and I know a lot of us feel the same way. Um, your wealth and responsibility you are using to save speech, and we just all appreciate it. We really do. So thank you so much. Thank you. So, let's see. Good times. Um, uh, I always get fired up uh, with the incredible energy uh, from you. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, 
yeah. It, 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 yeah. I mean, this, this, this kind of energy lights a fire in my soul, honestly. It's just great. It's like really fantastic. So, um, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, some, some of the things I'll, I'll say, I've, I've said before because it's important to say them a, a few times, um, just to make sure people get the message and, and for people out there that maybe uh, are seeing one of these talks for the first time and maybe didn't see the, the other talks. So forgive me if some of the things I say are repetitive, uh, but some, for people out there, they, a lot of them haven't heard these things, these things at all. Um, I, most important uh, it, is that the registration deadline uh, in Pennsylvania ends at midnight tomorrow. So uh, it's, it's, it, after that point, you, what, people cannot register to vote. So more than anything, it's register, register, register. Um, you only have until midnight tomorrow. Um, that's, that's, so it definitely hound friends, family, acquaintances, people on the street, everyone you meet, uh, to say, to just, just to register. It, we've, got, we've got to register. Wow, 90. Amazing. Congratulations. That's great. Um, I, I hope I live to 90. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, based on some of the damn hate I'm getting, I might not. <laughs> well, it's, it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye or, or an ear or... Uh, <laughs> So I guess so then it's just all fun and games with one eye and one ear. Fine, whatever, you know. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully I don't get shot. Um, it's <laughs> no, but it's like it's like a real it's 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 crazy out there, you know. Uh, yeah. Well. Anyway. <laughs> You know, there was like, uh, I was just on the cover of uh, some big, like, I think it's the biggest mag magazine in, in Germany called Der Spiegel, uh, where I was just like their Time magazine or something, um, saying that I'm enemy number two. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, enemy number two of what? Uh, democracy? I, I mean, I'm pro-democracy. All I'm literally trying to do is uphold the Constitution and ensure we have a fair, free and fair election. Yeah, so. Yeah, I know. I've, 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 you know, I'm definitely upgrading my security. You know, it's like. So, um, guess I better cancel that open car parade. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> um, maybe I can do an open park, open car parade, but it's, but it's actually uh, like a, a dummy version of me, and it's, and then see what happens. <laughs> It's just like an inflatable or something. I don't know, it'd be quite funny. Just troll them. Um, so, um, no, but I have to admit, I, sometimes I'm a little shook by, by some of the things that I see. You know, like the, the level of, of vitriolic hatred uh, on the left, which is supposed to be tolerant. They claim they're tolerant, and yet they're incredibly intolerant um, and, 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 and spewing hate. And, you know, whereas on the right, I see you know people sort of tend to regard people on the left as well misguided, um, but but you know you don't hate them; they're just yeah, mistaken. They're misguided. Um, but but the the, the, amount of, the amount of hate coming from the left is like wow, next level. Um, yeah, it's it's there's some evil stuff out there. Um, so you know, we should, I, I think we should uh, em embrace a diversity of views, and we should have reasonable arguments, and we should have debates and, and they should be, that's the essence of free speech is that ideas survive, uh, you know, when they're competing ideas in the marketplace of ideas. Um, you know, if somebody says something that's, that's incorrect, uh, then that can be corrected. That's, that's what happens on the X platform. People will say something, uh, then others will add context to it or they will correct it or there'll be a community note. Um, and this applies equally to the left and right you know, there's no thumb on the scale like there used to be. Um, and it's, you know, there's no vo voice on the left that's been silenced. 
unlike in the past where many voices on the right were silenced. Um, but they just don't seem to like the idea that people on the right can say what they want to say within the bounds of the law, um, which is startling. Um, I mean, the, the reason for this petition in support of the Constitution is because the Constitution really is under attack. Um, one prominent Democrat after another has been saying that freedom of speech, the First Amendment, is, is, a, is, is a, a, a bad thing. John yeah, John Kerry literally said that. Tim Walls. Tim and, and Tim Walls. Yeah, and Hillary. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like a long list. It's, it's, they're, they're not like, you know, mid-level people. in the, It's like the top people in the Democrat Party are saying the First Amendment's uh, an obstacle, and, and then they, they, they will refer to it, uh, you know, they, like, they use the word disinformation. Like, it's a pretty uh, good indication that if someone's using the word disinformation a lot, they are the ones creating the disinformation. So, and, 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 and you know who, the, 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 you know, if you're trying to figure out, well, like, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, the, 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 the people who are trying to suppress freedom of speech, they are the bad guys, you know? So, um, it, but it's, it's actually astonishing that, that we're even in this position in 2024 in America. It's hard to even believe that this is real, you know? Uh, and, and some of the crazy stuff that I see happening, like California passing a law, making it illegal uh, to, to require voter ID in any election in the state. Like, like not, not even like for like a city council. Um, and I, a friend of mine went to, to, to vote in, in Palo Alto in California because he was like, is this real or, or not? And he, he, he like tried to show his ID and, and, it, and it was like, a, like presenting a cross to a vampire. Like they're like, no, no, put the ID away. You know, like they literally, could, they weren't allowed to look at his ID even if he wanted to show it to them. That is the extent of the madness. This is a real thing in California right now. And if, if the Dems win nationally, they'll do it nationwide. Obviously, that's what's going to happen. And there will be no democracy. That's, that's why I think this is the most important election of our lifetime. Uh, President Trump is the only one who can save democracy. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Fight, 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 fight. I mean, yeah. I'm, st I'm still blown away that this is this, that a, that a bunch of this stuff is even real, you know. Like, and and, and every every week that goes by, something crazier happens. Um, so, but yeah, exactly. They have her in San Francisco. Yeah, and and the, the UK. <laughs> right, right. The, 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 there's like this movement to suppress freedom of speech. Uh, yeah, th throughout the world. Yep. And, I mean, and the thing is that if, if obviously, yeah, indeed, Mars 2028, you know, <laughs> Occupy Mars. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, we we want to do exciting, inspiring things that make you look forward to the future. You know, like, like sending people back to the moon, sending people to Mars. Exploring the solar system. You know, if you think of like, if you, if you ask probably anyone in the world, what was the most inspiring thing that humanity's ever done? I bet a lot of people would say, we went to the moon, you know? And, and yeah, well, but the fact that, the fact that, you know, 
as humans, you know, with all our issues and challenges, we're able to go to the moon. And even though it was only a handful of people that went to the moon, in a, in a sense, we all went there. We, we went there sort of with them. We, we had that, that experience. Well, I was admittedly one years old, but, um, <laughs> but I, saw the, I saw the videos. <laughs> and and, and it, it was incredibly inspiring that that is something that humans could do. Um, and we, we, but we want to do, do more than that in the future. We, want, we don't want that to be the best we ever did. We don't want that to be a high watermark. We want to do, go beyond. Uh, and we want, we want to have, like I said, a, a, like a permanent moon base alpha and, and, and a, uh, a city on Mars. And, and you know, I, I think uh, th go through, I mean, basically the entire solar system would be sick. <laughs> you know, we want sci fi to be real. Um, not just fiction forever. Uh, you, you just generally want to, to think about the future and say that, well, there's going to be exciting, inspiring things that are going to happen that are better than the past. And that's what makes you look forward to the future. So, you know, just you know, to, to sort of reiterate some of the, the, the key principles of what, you know, a, 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 a Trump, I mean, obviously, I think you guys know, but for people out there who may be listening, and especially uh, for uh, independent uh, sort of swing voters who are maybe deciding which way to go, um, you know, I, I think with the, with, with the Trump presidency, uh, we're going to get secure borders, we're going to get safe cities, uh, we're going to get uh, sensible spending, we're going to get uh, deregulation, uh, so we're only, we have sensible regulation, and we can unlock the, the, the power of the giant that is America. Um, and, 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 we'll up, and we're going to uphold the Constitution. Uh, we're we're going to strengthen freedom of speech, right to bear arms, and, and the, the freedoms that people treasure, um, and reduce the, the burden that the, the federal government places upon the states and the people within the states. Uh, Go, go, go. So, <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the Department of Government Efficiency is going to be great. You know, what that's going to do is, is really just uh, take a look at, at, at all the federal expenditures uh, and, and say if something is not uh, if, if you're not getting great value for money for your hard-earned tax dollars, cancel it. So, yeah. And I, I, I would regard this as, um, I would like to say it's a hard job, but actually it's not because there's so much waste. Um, so I, I actually think this is, a, this is a fairly easy job. Although it will get a lot of opposition, naturally. Um, from, from the entrenched interests that, that get the money and do nothing, you know, nothing good with it. Um, they'll be grumpy about it. Uh, but uh, the, the American people will be very happy that their tax dollars are being spent in a much more sensible way. And, and I think we, we, we also want to have extreme transparency. You know, so like no shady backroom deals or whatever. Everything done in the open, total exposure. Like you can see the mistakes that are made, the good things that are done. You can comment on it. You can, you know, raise concerns. This is, we, we want a transparent, open government. Um, and you know, it, because there will be mistakes that are made. But you want to, if, if there's, if there's with, with transparency comes trust. You know, and then you can see, oh, okay, we made a mistake. We'll fix that. We'll do that. You know, and and, and then and then you, you know. And that, that's, that's, that's the best way to restore trust in government. Not that you should trust government, you shouldn't trust government, but it'll be, you, you can trust it slightly more. <laughs> if there's at least transparency. So that, th those are all the things that, that, that I think we get with Trump. On the other hand, uh, you know, with, with the sort of, the, the sort of, de the de machine, you know, so it, what, 
there's like almost no point in attacking Kamala personally because she's just she's just a puppet of the machine. But if if if, if the if the Dem machine take, takes over and has another four years, uh, we'll obviously see wide open borders. We'll see our cities get less safe. Uh, we'll see uh, extreme spending um, and inflation. Um, we'll see uh, the f freedom of speech get taken away or severely undermined. Uh, we'll see the, the Second Amendment, right to bear arms, severely uh, undermined. They, they've said they're going to do this. This is not like a secret agenda. <laughs> but this is what they say in public. So, you know, just believe them when they say it. Um, and I think, well, um, yeah. Um, so, and I think there's, there's, there's other, another significant uh, danger, which I think uh, we should consider is that, the, I mean, there's a massive increase in the number of illegals that are being uh, put in swing states. If you look at the actual numbers, on, look, look at the government data. So this is government data reported from a Democratic administration. And you see triple digit increases over the past three years in the number of illegals in swing states. Now, the goal will then be to, over the next four years, to legalize all of those legals. And when you have uh, elections that are sometimes decided by 10 or 20,000 votes, and, you, and, and, the, and then you sort of tr put 200,000 legals and legalize them in, the, in that same swing state, now you've got a 200,000 vote advantage. And every swing state will be blue, and we'll be a, America will be a one-party state forever, like, just like California. And that would be a nightmare. Democracy, gone. That's, 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 that's what I think is, will happen with the Kamala presidency. Mark my words. And, and this, is, this is why like, people wonder, like, why am I politically active? Because I'm, I'm actually, I'm a technologist. I, I, you know, I build rockets and cars and stuff. Um, so what, what, what am I doing in politics? Um, it, it's, it's not, I, I don't want to be in politics. I want to be clear. <laughs> that is not my preference. I, 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 like, I just like building stuff. I, I like building products that people love. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I, I derive joy from seeing people enjoy the products that my companies make. Um, so, I, I like making products people love. And that, that, that's what I normally like doing. And I, and I, and I, I Actually, don't like politics at all. <laughs> I hate politics. <laughs> but, 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 but the stakes are so high here that I, I have had no choice but to uh, take a stand. Um, so it, it's not something I want to do. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, dramatically increasing my my risk of being assassinated, and uh, you know, and 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 uh, engaging in, in in politics are, are not what I want to do. Uh, I do not have a, a death wish. Um, but, but the stakes are so high that I really have, I feel I have no choice but to do it. Um, and and that's, that's the reason. So. And, and, and thank you all for your strong support and everything you're doing uh, to ensure that we, we have a democracy and that we, and that, we, and that uh, the right side wins. So thank you guys for everything you're doing. And thank you out there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, to, to, to everyone out there, um, you know, because uh, I think there's, there's uh, there's millions of people that will watch this um, this town hall and this you know this talk and this, the, the questions that we'll Q and A that we'll do. Um,
please, please, if you're in Pennsylvania, uh, sorry for it to be repetitive, but you've got less than 36 hours to register. Please make sure you register. Make sure everyone you know is registered to vote. Um, and please make sure everyone you know has, has voted, uh, that they, if, they've, if they've received an absentee ballot, that they, that they, they actually vote. And, and I would really actually advise people to vote early. Um, so vote immediately. Um, and you can go in and, and you, you, it's, it's kind of a, an, an odd uh, nomenclature because it says absentee ballot, but you can actually take your absentee ballot and hand it in in person. <laughs> so, so then you're like, okay. Then you know it, you know, you know it got there. You're literally handing it to the person. You can, you know, I guess probably take a picture of it or something. Um, but it's, that, that, that's, that's incredibly important. Um, and, you know, I, I think like a lot of the challenge we face is, is I guess one of perhaps maybe, it, it, not, not among obviously in this audience, but, but some people that ha we have an issue of, 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 of apathy where they, maybe they, they think their vote doesn't count or they don't think it's serious enough. Um, and, and so, um, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, they, 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 they have not registered to vote and they have not voted. Uh, so it's just really important to go out, go out there and explain the importance of this election and how democracy is on the line. Um, and this, I think, is the, this, this, is the, this might be the very last election that's a real election. Um, and it's, it's the most important election in your lifetime. And if, if there's any election where you ever vote, it should be this one. So, yeah. So let's, uh, we can, maybe we can go to a Q&A. Yeah. Uh, so we, we can start Q&A if, if, if anyone would like. Uh, you have to line up, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, second, of course, the Second Amendment. That's what our petition is about, because the reason, the reason, like, if if we lose the Second Amendment, the 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 there won't be a First Amendment. The Second Amendment is there to make sure the First Amendment uh, stays strong. Sir. Elon, my question is for both you and for Dave McCormick, your guest here tonight. Both of you have experienced incredible success in business and you're both self-made men, truly the embodiment of the American dream. I wanna know what Dave can do and what you can do in taking that same opportunity to Washington so that others can experience it as well. Yeah, um, well, I, th I think uh, the things that, we're, that we've talked about will have a big effect. Um, you know, the, 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 sh the sheer amount of, of, of uh, what I call the uh, strangulation of America by overregulation that is inhibiting progress, like pre preventing new houses from being built, preventing bridges from being built, um, preventing e even trivial things like the Boring Company, for example, is just trying to dig a simple tunnel under a river, has been waiting two years for a permit, can't get it done, so they're just sitting somewhere. Um, I, I think the dere you know, when Reagan did deregulation in the 80s, uh, there was it un unleashed a wave of prosperity. I think that's a super big deal. Um, the, the other thing that's, uh, that is, that's very important that I haven't touched upon is, is that we need to make sure that America, uh, that, that you, you get ahead purely as a function of how hard, of your talent and hard work. Nothing else. So, you know, the, 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 like racism, uh, sexism in any form is bad. It doesn't matter who it's directed towards. Um, and we, we want to have the land of opportunity. Just, it means that you're as good as, as how hard you work and how talented you are and what contribution you make. And that should be the, the, only, re that, that, that should only be the only thing that matters about getting ahead. I just want to know if you are considering running in 2028. <laughs> Well, there'd have to be a constitutional amendment for that. Um, 
So I, I, um, my grandfather was American, actually, but uh, I, I, um, I, was, I was born, uh, oddly enough, in, in Africa, which is uh, a, a, strange, a strange spawn point, but uh, I, you know, it's like, uh, so I cannot be president. Um, but but it, it is not, I, I actually don't want to be president. <laughs> so so uh, to be clear, I, I, I want to build rockets and cars. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, uh, so, I, am I, am I, I mean, I'm, I'm super liberal. I, and in fact, you can look at, you know, to talks that I gave like 20 years ago, and I say the same thing, you know? So you, it's like, it's not like, um, you know, I, I, I'm just, you know, I believe we want to be a space-bearing civilization and out there among the stars, and we need to, you know, have great rocket technology for that. Um, you know, I believe in electric, electric cars and, and automation and, uh, you know, self-driving and robotics and uh, it, the space-based internet. So I, I just love creating technologies that, that people find useful, um, and, and that's, that's what I want to do with my time. So I, I, I'm hoping that... Um, you know, we, we get President Trump elected, and then I will I'll work hard on, on the Department of Government Efficiency. Um, and, uh, and then, um, you know, I, 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 you know, after that, after that I, I hope I can, I can not be in politics. That would be my hope. <laughs> so, I, I, that, so you, know, I, you know, like I said, I, you know, I'm doing this because I think it's, it's, it's critical to the future of the country. And, and if America falls, nothing else matters. You know, we're not getting to Mars or anything. Um, so, uh, you know, and I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people, like leaders in business and technology, because I was like, guys, you should really, you know, you need to go out, go out there and, and, and fight hard, because, you know, you, if, if America falls, your, your company's going to fall with it. So why aren't, you, you know, people, I, I wish more uh, leaders in business and technology would, would put themselves out there. Um, like, they, they, they usually agree with me, and, and they support Trump, but they're, scared, they, they, they're afraid of, of, of saying so. Um, and I'm like, man, the, the stakes are super high. You know, fortunately, more and more people are sort of, you know, coming out of the closet, you know, type of thing. It's like, <laughs> so, like, saying they support Trump, it's like, you know, it's like, maybe it's, it's probably the most rebellious thing you could do in San Francisco, but it's like... <laughs> You know, by a long shot. Um, so, you know, that's uh, anyway. My, I, I'm not a natural po politician, nor do I wish to be. Um, I, I just want to make uh, you know cool technology that that uh, that you'll love to use. So, all right. S Sam, just to uh, Eli, just to, to respond to Sam's question. What the Democratic Party is running on now is not only anti-business, it's anti-success. And, uh, and anti-business is these huge regulations that are stifling uh, businesses, whether it's dairy farms or SpaceX, yeah. and everything, I mean, fracking. I mean, you don't have to ban fracking to ban fracking, you just have red tape and bureaucracy and all sorts of stipulations that make it impossible to succeed. And, and on the personal success side, we need to give every single kid the opportunity with great schools to be everything they can be, our school system needs to be totally renovated to give everybody an opportunity. Not everybody, not everybody needs to go to college. They just have to have the skills to have a great career in the American dream. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, well, let's see, next question. Hi, Elon. <laughs> um, like Donald Trump, and like yourself, I think, I am the survivor of an assassination attempt. Uh, well, <laughs> nobody's gotten close enough to shoot a bullet yet. Okay, well, uh, like two, Donald two, Trump then. There's a couple of people that have tried to get close, but they were arrested before they got close. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But in my case, my parents hired a hitman, otherwise known as an abortionist doctor. Okay to try to kill me when I was in the womb. Wow. But he was terrible at his job, and I survived, and I'm here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad, glad you're here. Not, thank you. 
But, so needless to say, I'm very pro-life. <laughs> yes. But even without that, I would be pro-life, um, not even based on religious reasons, but just the moral and rational, logical reasons. And I know that you're a rational person, and you are pro-humanity. Yes. And I love humanity. I, I do. I'm just wondering if you would ever consider publicly supporting the pro-life movement. Yeah, I mean, so obviously this is a contentious topic, if there ever was one. Um, it is perhaps, uh, perhaps the most contentious topic. Um, the, and, and to be clear out there, uh, you know, President Trump has been clear that he will veto a national abortion ban. Uh, so uh, he has said that, it's, it, because the, the Democrats have said that he, he will imp apply a national abortion ban, and that is causing a lot of uh, sort of in independent voters to actually not vote for Trump because they, th they think that he will implement a national abortion ban. He has been very clear that he thinks it's a, state, it's a state's rights issue and he will veto a national abortion ban. Um, so, now, uh, you know, th th there, there is no answer to this question that will not uh, offend some number of people. Um, but nonetheless, I will tell you what, what, what my opinion is, um, which will certainly offend some number of people. Uh, uh, my, my, my opinion is that if a, if, if a baby can survive outside the womb, uh, it, it cannot be aborted. Um, it, it cannot. Um, so, if, 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 if a baby can survive outside the womb, if it is, if it is far enough in gestation to survive outside the womb, at that point it is not abortion, it is murder. So, obviously. Um, now, now, part of the challenge here is that the education system has terrified uh, girls and, and, and you know, girls and women, uh, and, and, and relentlessly pushed the idea that that getting pregnant can be the, is is the end of your life. Like your your career is dead. You're be ostracized from society, um, and and so when you instill terror in, in in young girls that getting pregnant is the worst thing that could happen, uh, they they obviously you know they they believe that. Uh, if, if they're you know, just, just kids. Um, and so that if, when, when that is a deep-seated belief that, that they've been um, hit with in the educational system for a long time, um, then the idea that, that they will not get, be able to get an abortion even in extreme circumstances is obviously a terrifying situation. Um, and they will not vote for any candidate who, uh, who, who, who might, uh, in, you know, essentially who would stop them from, 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 from getting uh, an abortion, even in extreme circumstances. So th this is the issue that we face. It's, it's this relentless uh, you know, push in education, terrifying uh, girls and women that, that if they get pregnant, their life's over. Um, so, um, and and the, the reality is there's, there's nothing greater than having a kid. Um, and <laughs> so, You know, um, I, I get you know more joy in my life for my kids than anything else, and that's that's generally true of all, all humans. In fact, if, if that that is that is how we evolved, um, that is, it is a very natural thing uh, that you will love your children. Um, so so in fact, uh, having a child is it will will make you happier than anything else in your life ever. So. So you, you get a chance to ask one of the most intelligent men in the uh, world a question. What do you ask? So, um, what are your thoughts on clean energy as far as um, nuclear energy, nuclear power? Sure. Uh, seems to be the cleanest, um, or yeah. one of the cleanest that we have. Yeah. And... Um, there's talk about developing uh, miniature reactors. Do you think that's where we should focus our, our tax dollars on for the future? Well, I, I am um, very much pro-nuclear. Um, if you actually look at the data, 
Um, and especially if you look at, say, uh, modern uh, nuclear reactors, uh, the modern designs are so safe that if you tried to get a meltdown, you couldn't do it. Like if you went there with, with, with flamethrowers and explosives, and your goal was to get this thing to melt down, it still won't melt down. That's how good modern nuclear reactors are. So they're not dangerous. Um, and they're a great source of energy, um, and I think we should, uh, we should do a lot more nuclear power. I think it's a smart move. You know, um, when in, in Japan, um, when, when they had the, the tsunami and uh, the, uh, they had the Fukushima re, uh, you know, reactor was, was taken out, um, I had people in California asking me if, they're, if I, they should be worried about the radiation coming from Japan. I'm like, definitely not. That's insane. Um, and so actually to, to support the people of Japan, um, I, you know, because people were scared to even travel to Japan, I went, I didn't go to, just go to Japan, I went to Fukushima itself and ate locally grown vegetables on TV. And amazing, I'm still alive. <laughs> wow, can you believe it? <laughs> No, we don't need to send the nuclear waste to a different planet. The nuclear waste is very tiny, um, and, and it can be, you can store it, as much of it as you want on site at the nuclear reactor. You don't even need to move it. Can you put it in a Tesla? <laughs> oh. uh, You'll tell me when? Not yet. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I just said we should be less scared of, of, of uh, nuclear stuff. And I, it doesn't take long to just, I mean, if you just read, like, the... You know, even Wikipedia level stuff, it's, it's going to make it clear that it's, it's not, not, not a scary, it's not a scary thing. Um, now, now if, if, to sort of um, maybe sort of wax uh, scientific philosophy, you know, philosophically, scientifically, um, the, 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 the real massive energy source in our solar system overwhelmingly is the sun. So the sun converts uh, roughly four and a half million tons of mass to energy every second. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's very reliable um, and requires no maintenance and no servicing. It's pretty great. No service for like, all that energy. Um, so long term, by far, by far, 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 the, the most amount of energy we'll get is from the sun. The solar energy exceeds all other energy by a factor of a trillion. Like literally, not an exaggeration. So, yeah. Yeah, solar flares can take out the grid because the, the grid's like a giant, uh, like, radio, like a radio antenna. So, solar flares can take out the grid, yeah. I don't know if we have a plan. I suspect we do not have a plan. <laughs> so, um, you know, te Tesla mega packs can can help uh, uh, buffer the grid and and add resilience to the grid. So and they've they've done that in in many parts of the world, including in the U.S. So uh, let's see. So yeah. Well, first, uh, thank you for everything, uh, Elon. You've just been incredible for the last 20 years. My question is about the election is, are you concerned about the rise of AI, especially foreign governments' AIs, on our election system? Yeah, I think we should just, in general, be wary of AI, um, uh, domestically or internationally. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, I, I think, like, most likely, it's, I think it's 80% likely that, that AI um, makes the future great, and 20% that it makes the future really bad. <laughs> so we want to maximize the, the probability of, of, it, of it being good. Um, and I think we, we should be on the lookout for any manipulation domestically or internationally uh, through the use of AI. It's going to happen. Hi, Elon. 23-year-old native Pittsburgher here. Very appreciative of the love you've shown us during this extremely important time in the election. Thank you so much. My question today, Elon, is I, I know you're familiar with Pittsburgh because of the work we've done over at CMU in the machine learning, machine discovery oh, yeah. field. Yeah. Uh, and my Parting question Mellon, today is... Parting Mellon is an, an awesome university, actually. Uh, uh, one, of my son, my, one of my sons is, is headed to CMU next year. Great, great. Yeah. 
my question today, Elon, is in regards to the rumored government efficiency role um, that you and Trump have spoke about, how can you use this role to work AI in the right direction for all people, um, not just people like myself who work in the field, um, but for everyone? I think for young voters like myself, it's something that concerns us as we look forward. Um, so how, as you get more entrenched in public policy, can you help us there? Well, um I'll, I'll answer that, but I, I would actually like to hear what, what do you think I should do? Um, my my I mean, thoughts... Like, I'd, I'd like to hear, like, I, I, you know... Absolutely. I, I, I'm, basically, I'm looking for feedback here, is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, my... I... Oh, congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, great, great school. I, uh, my thoughts are that... So it's, um, at least it's probably the best, best robotics it is, uh, college in the world. So. It, it's a shaky road forward, um, and I, I agree with you. I, I think 20% could be bad, and 20% could be uh, phenomenal. Uh, and I think for Pittsburgh, I, I speak for Pittsburgh here, um, it is a city that is moving away from steel and into technology. Um, and with people like yourself, if we can in, improve that sector here, I think we can improve life here for everyone. Um, and if, if we can improve life in Pittsburgh, we can use AI and those technologies to improve life for people everywhere. Um, and I, I think it's sure. through a, a lack of regulation um, as opposed to what they're doing in the EU right now, attacking people. Uh, and I just was curious on your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I think uh, you're, you're, we are going to see um, a massive, you know, uh, ma massive increase in the number of robots. Um, and, uh, you know, recently uh, we, Tesla unveiled uh, the latest Optimus robot, and um, I think that's, uh, that's going to be really cool. I mean, we, 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 we want to give everyone their own, their own personal C-3PO R2-D2, you know? And, like, who wouldn't want that? That would be awesome, you know? Um, and and even, even, even better than that. So uh, I think there's, that's, that's really going to be... <laughs> Yeah, and well, yeah, privacy concerns are significant. Anyway, the, the, uh, but I want, one, one of the things I want to be clear is like is that uh, I am looking for feedback. So it's it's not like I'm just going open loop here and doing whatever I want to do. I'm like, I want I kind of want to know what 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 do the people want, and uh, you know, and and uh, what should we do, and and then do it, you know. So it's as opposed to me just uh, just deciding on my own, like uh, you know, so. Yeah. Elon, you're, you're clearly a great American pioneer, and, and we all in Pittsburgh want to welcome you and thank you for coming. Thank you thank for you. taking my question. Well, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. This is really the cradle of, of pioneers in the history of America. People here from George Washington as a surveyor to Lewis and Clark, who pushed their Pittsburgh-made boat into the Ohio and explored the West to so many in industries being born. Radio, uh, the movies, the first refinery for oil, the Pittsburgh coal seems the biggest in the world, the nuclear energy you mentioned, uh, Westinghouse and Tesla creating alternating current out at Rockwell Park, the philanthropic industry, Pittsburgh outproduced Germany and Japan in steel yeah. together during World War II. Yeah. A group of us are starting a movement here, we're calling it Pittsburgh Tomorrow, in which we're trying to rekindle that pioneering spirit. Clearly, your son is involved. You mentioned you might want to invest. We believe that not only can we turn around the malaise in America and help make Pittsburgh resurgent, but also by making this a place where people can conceive of a new reality and make it happen, that that can provide the same kind of example that you're striving for. So I just want to thank you for being here, and we want to welcome and in invite you to invest in our city as we make it the best place to live in the world. Sounds good. Well, um, I, mean, I mean, given that my son will be attending college here next year, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh a lot, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna be waving this towel quite a lot. Good exercise. Loosens you up. <laughs> Hi, I'm here tonight as a sex trafficking survivor. 
And I am here to ask you personally, Elon, if you will work with sex trafficking survivors and sex workers about our First Amendment rights and how both X and U can help both vulnerable communities who already have laws against our First Amendment rights that are on the books. Um, okay, I mean, I'm generally in favor of any policy that maximizes the happiness of the people. Um, so, uh, what would you recommend? Uh, first of all, I'd rep recommend repealing FOSTA-SESTA, which was signed on April 11th of 2018 and supported by both parties. What this actually does is it silences certain vulnerable com communities, both um, sex trafficking survivors as well as sex workers, um, from anywhere in the internet. They really? shut our websites down. Uh, within weeks, people started to die, um, both by crazy. suicide as well as um, homicide. Violence is up to, at an all-time high, and we are currently being silenced by our government with laws such as FOSTA-SESTA, which violates our First Amendment rights. Um, and as a child sex trafficking survivor and a full-service sex worker of over 25 years, um, I can tell you that the resources in Pennsylvania for sex trafficking survivors are going to police to arrest full service sex workers instead of protecting anybody. I was abused at age nine Jeez. and 10 right here in Western Pennsylvania. Oh, wow, sorry to hear that. Thank you. And over 30 years later, there are still zero sex trafficking survivor resources and police continue to arrest full service sex workers and say that they're helping the children, but they're not helping any children. So would you be open to a conversation to work with uh, sex trafficking survivors and sex workers to make X a platform where we are safe and uh, don't get silenced by our government? Well, as I've you know, said very clearly, I'm in favor of anything that supports freedom of speech. Uh, so any infringement on freedom of speech, I would be against and you know, people should be able to speak their mind. That's the whole idea of the First Amendment. Um, and I mean, the priority uh, uh, you know, for law enforcement should be protecting children, um, uh, you know, first and foremost because they can't protect themselves. So, you know, protect the kids first, everything else second. Hi, Elon. Thanks so much for being here. As you know, you're an inspiration to us all, but mostly you're really an inspiration to the young children of America who want to be able to dream big and who want to be able to do things. But the federal government, with the Department of Education, puts a firewall behind that. They don't allow our kids to dream big. They don't allow them to have free thoughts. They're censored in the classroom. They can't talk about the open discourse that you encourage on X. So you're doing that on X, but what can we? I'm a mom of three kids. How can we make this happen in school so that the kids can dream big and achieve what you're dreaming? Right. Well, I, I, do, th I do think we need significant reform in education. Um, I mean, the Department of Education seems to regard as its primary duty uh, foisting propaganda on our children, uh, as opposed to getting them a good education. It's insane. You know, uh, it's, it's a, I mean, we, we, we should be just, the priority should be teach kids skills that, will, that will, they will find useful later in life and leave any so, sort of social propaganda out of the classroom. So. Okay, I've got a foreign policy type question for you. So in Israel, they have free health care, they have free college. We don't have it in this country yet. Every year we send them $3.8 billion dollars Last year, in addition to the 3.8 billion, we sent them another 14.3 billion dollars. So why should we as taxpayers keep funding that lifestyle in Israel? And second question real quick. We also have our politicians bought and paid for by APAC because APAC sends back the money we send them into the tune of 100 million dollars. How can you fix that for us? Well, I think we need to look, take a look at all federal expenditures and say, uh, you know, all federal expenditures and say, is this really benefiting the American people or is it not? Um, and, and if it is, well, are we spending it uh, wisely? Well, usually the answer is no. So then it's, we should spend less money and spend it efficiently. Um, but there's got to be a clear benefit to the American people or we shouldn't be spending money. So. Eli, I just want to say I'm a huge fan. I wasn't an ex-user after you bought it. I became an ex-user. Thank you. Please, please encourage uh, everyone you know to 
uh, you know, premium. I'm a premium X user. Ex thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I'd, I'd just like to thank everyone who's who, who's a, 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 a sort of a paid subscriber on X. Uh, this it's really important because it, it you know other, otherwise we're totally beholden to the advertisers. Um, and uh, you know, so the, the, this, this, when, when you subscribe, you're, you're helping. Uh, you're helping with freedom of speech. Um, so thank you for subscribing. Yeah. And as I became an X user, I did bought a Tesla, which I love. Great. And just recently, I ordered Starlink because of what you did for all the hurricane victims. Great. Elon, my son and I are huge fans, so my son is in the line over there. He literally, every single word you speak, he takes to heart. He right. got married at age 17. Wow. And he has two children, and his goal is to Excellent. have more children than you, Elon. I, that is a great goal. Awesome. Honestly, like, like the, the, the birth rate issue is a massive problem. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, that is great. Um, like we need people. <laughs> yes. It's like if you don't make new humans, there's no humanity. It's like <laughs> they don't come from nowhere. Yeah, you, you gotta make them, and it takes. It's really hard to make kids. And yeah. It takes a long time for them to grow up, and there's a lot of diapers involved. Um, awesome. But but kids are the most wonderful thing that you'll ever have in your life, and uh, yes. you know it's. I would say start early. Easy. So I'm glad to hear your your son's doing that. So we will keep supporting you, Elon. The quote that comes to me thinking of you is, the only thing necessary for a triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Right. And what you've done the last two years is stood up and spoke, and now evil is getting tamped down, and we appreciate your courageous leadership. And doing Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Elon. So much of campaign messaging is about fixing current problems, where I think future aspirations for the country often don't get discussed as much. You obviously have some pretty large goals for your companies. Uh, so with years of good leadership and common sense policies implemented under a Trump presidency, describe your utopia America and describe the long-term achievements that you believe can be possible. Thank you. Sure. Um, well, well, first of all, I should say that I think America is great. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I, th I think we, we, we want to make sure that the, the fundamental elements that have made America great remain in place. The, 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 you know, and those fundamental elements are freedom and opportunity. Um, so maximizing individual freedom, minimizing government interference, um, and making sure that, the, that you get ahead as a function of your hard work and talent, and that's the only thing. Um, if, if we have those, those fundamental things, and, and we, we, you know, then the Constitution stands strong, uh, we will, America will get greater and greater. Um, so that, 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 that's, that's really important. But, but, and, but to, to your point, like, we have to have a combination. We have to, we have to do both things. We, we have to you know, solve the problems uh, that we face, but we, we must also have exciting, inspiring goals. Because life can't just be about solving one miserable problem after another. I mean, that's like, it's hard to get fired up about, okay, we've got another problem to solve. There's, there's gotta be things that, that you're excited about in the future that move your heart. You know, you're like, wow, I can't wait to see that happen, you know? So that's, that's the kind of thing where, you, 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 like, you know, where we want optimism about the future, uh, optimism that is grounded on realism. Um, and uh, so, you know, I think, you know, grand projects, uh, you know, uh, revolutionizing the transport, uh, you know, I mean, obviously I've got, I've got some ideas and probably other people have ideas too. Um, you know, I think it's possible, although I'm not, not really involved in medicine outside of Neuralink, I think it's possible for us to have a revolution in medicine. Um, you know, um, like, th 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 there are actually a, a, a huge number of, of, of drugs at the, that are stuck in approval at the FDA that can help people. And they're just stuck in bureaucratic molasses. Um, and uh, a, a good friend of mine was telling me uh, a, a story that fortunately had a, had a, had a happy ending, uh, where his, um, 
his mom was diagnosed with, with brain cancer. And she, you know, the oncologist said, you know, there's, there's, there's no chance, there's, it's, you know, it's got maybe four or five months to live. Um, but my friend is, is a very smart, determined person, and he, he looked, he searched, you know, for, for uh, you know, what are, and it, he, he, talked to, he talked to every smart, people, smart person he knew, and, and, and he found someone who said, yeah, actually, there's, there's a drug that's, that's in trials that you take this pill, and it, it actually makes the brain cancer go away. Literally, you just take a pill. He's like, what? And, and uh, I think it's called like well, Welly Rig or something, FYI. <laughs> this drug called Welly Rig that solves brain cancer. <laughs> Maybe more people should know about this. Um, and I think it's in trials at Harvard or something, and, um, and, and it cured his mom. And, uh, you know, so that just happened. I think it was like this year. But, but if we could just be faster about getting, you know, uh, amazing drugs through the system, a lot more people would be alive, uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, that, that's, that's the kind of thing when I say, like, you know, like regulation kills, overregulation kills people. Where, where, you, where you've got helpful drugs stuck, stuck in approvals and, um, not, not help, and, and could be helping people, but they're not. That, that's crazy, you know? So it's simply, simply expediting uh, drug approval and the FDA, I think, will save millions of lives. So. from Charlotte, Pennsylvania, the home of Pyrex. Pyrex is synonymous to quality. Corn and glass created Pyrex. Pyrex is almost in almost every kitchen in the world because the people love it, the sure. product they love. And you know, along with Pyrex, um, Corn and created Gorilla Glass that's in almost every phone in this facility today. Sure. They built that on quality and excellence over centuries. Okay. Oh. You have created multiple companies on quality and excellence in just the last few decades. You know, the key to that, you have it, and what is that? Can we bring that key to Washington? And one follow-up is our competition bought Pyrex, and they want to rip away the, the quality and when okay. the FTC proves antitrust, will you be our white knight? Well, I mean, to the degree that I'm influential in government, I will do my best to ensure that, that actions are taken that maximize the benefit to the American people. Um, so I think probably yes. Uh, so, and, and, and look, I, you know, I don't know how, at the end of the day how much influence I'll have, um, I'll, I'll do, but I'll do my best to be as helpful as possible. So. Hi, Elon. Uh, I just want to say thank you, like everybody else has too. Um, with your amazement involvement and contributions in technology, do you have any projects or interest in developing kidneys for people like myself who suffer from hereditary diseases and kidney failure to help us get off of dialysis and move into a normal life? Well, I. Well, I, I I do not have any kidney programs myself, but there might be some companies out there that do. Um, and, you know, just to get back to the regulation thing, it's, you know, if, if, if we can uh, have sensible regulation um, and, and, and fast-track approvals of new technologies, um, then uh, I think, you, uh, the, you know, things like uh, your new kidneys and, and m many other ailments uh, can be uh, available to the American public much faster um, and, and, and at a much lower cost, because actually a lot of people don't realize, like, a, a lot of the cost of, of developing these uh, new, new medications and new cures, new devices, is, is the, the massive regulatory burden that is placed upon companies. Um, so, you know, I, I think we, we, we ought to expedite approvals, uh, for, you know, for, for, for new drugs, new devices, and, and new medical technology, Things and then we, we, as long as as long as companies very clearly describe the, the benefits and the risks, it should be up to the individual as to whether they want to use it. Hi, 
Hi. Hi, Alan. And it's to tag on the, the question about Doge and the uh, healthcare expenditure. Because I'm a heart surgeon. I'm in the practice for 25 years. So I've seen so many inefficiencies. Yes, and absolutely. When I talk to doctors, they tell me it's, it's it, everyone, there was like they're mired in bureaucracy and, and administrative stuff. And, the, and then they get sued, you know, out of, like sued to bankruptcy sometimes. And it's just crazy. That's right. $4.8 trillion we spend and still very inefficient and highly costly. So my question to you is, Pittsburgh, we have a very um, well-reputed three healthcare systems, UPMC, Allegheny, and WVU systems, to provide the domain knowledge. And we have a Carnegie Mellon for uh, engineering talent. So we needed a third guy like you who can do the impossible things like bringing the astronaut from the International Space Station down, or catching a 250-ton rocket with a two chopsticks, <laughs> or, or build a 100,000-server farm in 19 days, which normally takes four years. So I think we need a guy like you, impossible, to create a healthcare AI. And Pittsburgh will be a great place to do it. So can you yeah. able to do? Uh, healthcare AI here. I, I think I think AI is going to be incredible for for medicine. Um, actually, as as it is uh, for for Grok right now, you can actually upload a PET scan and ask Grok to analyze the PET scan for you, um, and and then you can compare that to what what a doctor tells you and see what the difference is. Like you, you can literally upload your image to Grok and it will analyze. Your, your MRI, your PET scan, whatever the case may be, and, and tell you what it thinks the probable uh, issue is. And that's with Grok 2, and Grok 3 uh, will be out in a few months, and it'll be 10 times better. So I think it could be really helpful to medical professionals and to individuals. So I think there's, there's, there's a lot of amazing potential. I think there's the potential for us to have an amazing, exciting future, um, which, but we just have to, to work hard to make that happen. Um, and... Uh, and, and, you know, to circle back, I think essential to making that happen is electing President Trump. Yeah. Indeed. Let's do that again. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's like, it's like my friggin' back still hurts. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, here's 2024. And, and I, I still have back pain. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience have back pain. Um, you know, it's, it's just solving back pain, I think, would be a massive increase in people's happiness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Well, God bless you, Elon. God bless you for what you are doing for our country. I, um, and you have articulated... Yes, how, um, how you love children, and children cannot protect themselves. Uh, of course. So we must protect them. Yes. Well, there are a, a couple of documentaries, truth, that are out there about what's happened to over 300,000 children who have crossed the borders, the open borders, and they have been sex trafficked. And nobody can see, and that's, probably a very low number, and it's happening in every state in this country, and especially, like you said, the swing states. I know that it's happening in communities near me. So these documentaries um, cost a lot to make, so there is a charge to watch them, $10 minimal, but still expensive for some. Is there anything that you can do to make these documentaries more widespread and available? Well, that, that's, good. that's a good point. Um, well, I guess, um, like, I do have a foundation, and um, maybe the foundation could, could pay to have them, um, you know, uh, available for, for free or something like that. They're a line in the sand, and what is treason? Or uh, okay. just two of them. So All right. if you could look into that, that would be amazing for those children and their families. All right, I'll look into it. Thank you. Yeah.
Hi, um, I love my Tesla. Thank you. And I admire your ability to define what your vision is and to work backwards and uh, engineer solutions to su successfully achieve solutions to those. And thank you for applying those to our constitution and to help restore our representative um, republic. Um, You're most welcome. My, uh, my concern is the puppet masters that are Indeed. behind the scenes. And yeah. they, um, I call them global cabal dictatorship because they have, they're, they're connected and they have no intention of giving up that power. Yeah. They, they uh, dogged Trump in his first term and I yeah. anticipate them doing the same in the next. Um, when he's elected, how can you help Trump remove their power and damper their influence this time around? Well, yeah. Um, now, I, 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 I don't want to be clear that, like, in my opinion, we should not do the bad things that they are doing, you know? So, you know, the... If you look at what what the, the Dem machine is, has done, they've, they've tried to uh, imprison President Trump. They've engaged in unbelievable lawfare um, to, just to stop people from voting, which is obviously uh, anti-democratic. Um, but I, I don't. I, I think the right thing to do is is not not to do what they've done, um, but rather to reinforce the strength of the legal system and for there to be uh, some some kind of punishment for engaging in lawfare. Um, so, so, you know, it's, one, one should not resp respond to corruption of the system with corruption, but with removal of corruption. Yeah. That's the right thing. Hello, Elon. I, my name is Harrison Burkhardt. I've lived in here for about a year and a half in Pittsburgh. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Did, you've been a... I've looked up to you since I was eight years old, and I'm 19 now, so that's obviously a significant amount of time. And, well, th thanks. And, I don't know, with everything you've done, you, you were against lockdowns, you've endorsed Donald Trump, you're trying to protect the American Constitution. You've proven to me that I chose the right childhood hero, and I just want to say thank you for that. Well, and, so it's kind of you to say. Thank you, sir. And, thank you. Uh, so my question for you, you, you've talked a lot about how you want to minimize government intervention and all that. And I was just wondering specific things. I know, for example, John F. Kennedy wanted to blow the CIA up into a million pieces. There... <laughs> yeah, maybe he should have uh, not said that. Uh, anything, he, he should is have... there anything specific that you want I mean, to destroy like you that? Know, you don't want to, you know, definitely don't do open cough raids after saying something like that. Um, so, no, I, th I think uh, it, we, we obviously want to not have corruption in government, and in general, we want to have smaller government. Um, so, so the, because the larger government gets, the less individual freedom you have. Um, and I think, you know, that, that's really the, 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 the core, like, as I said, the, the, the core things people, people have said for, for, for many years from the founding of the country was that's freedom and opportunity. And we, we want to, max, and, and your freedoms have just been eroded year after year with more and more government laws and regulations and regulatory authorities. Um, I mean, I, when I looked it up, it, there's apparently there's like 428 federal agencies. That's, that's like almost two per... Unconstitutional! Yes, indeed, unconstitutional. Um, so, like, what the hell do you need 428 agencies for? Like, why do you even need 100? Um, this is crazy. So, you know, they're, they're, they're currently making new agencies at a rate of two per year. Uh, this is, and, and every one of them is, is chipping away at your freedom. So it, it's essential for us to unwind that process and restore your personal freedom. Um, and with that will come great prosperity and personal happiness, I believe. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Sorry, go, go ahead. All right. Well, for, you talk about minimizing government. Would you want to make tax cuts too? For example, the, the American Revolution was started over a 2% tax on imports. Yeah. How low would you want to go as far as cutting taxes? Yeah, it's pretty wild that 
a tiny tax on tea uh, started the revolution. And, and now, now we get the living daylights tax out of us and nobody seems to, does not know revolution. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you get, uh, you know, you get, you get taxed on what you earn, you get taxed on what you buy, and you get taxed on what you own. And it's like, okay, this is, this, this is you know, taxes, taxes, taxes. And, um, you know, and, and then what does it get spent on? Not, a bunch of the stuff it gets spent on you don't even agree with. So, you know, that, that's why we, we, need, we need to reduce the size of government um, and just spend less money and... Uh, you know, let, 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 let the people keep their, uh, uh, a lot more of their hard-earned money. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah, so. Hi, Elon. My name is Denise, and I run um, Pennsylvania Women for Trump. We're uh, Pennsylvania's largest grassroots group, and the best day of my life is when you bought Twitter. It was so freaking awesome. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> I do have a point to make. Um, I do want to come work for you, and I gave, I know your best friends here, and I gave them all my information, but anyway, I would like to know if you have a solution to Big Pharma. As a mom of three kids with autism, I would like to know, like, what are we going to do about these people poisoning our children? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think transparency and accountability are very important. Um, so, now, um, you, you know, but, but uh, in, in my opinion of, of, of Big Pharma is that there's good and bad. It's not all bad, obviously. There's, there, there, are, there are many life-saving drugs that are developed by the, the big pharma companies and small pharma companies, um, but there are also mistakes that they make. Um, and so we just need to make sure that the system is uh, actually helping the, the, the pharma companies bring uh, life-saving cures to market faster uh, but also that there should be some p uh, punishment if they do bad things, just like for any company, you know? And that's, I, I think it's, th those are just basic common sense rules. So. Hi. Um, my name is Madison, I'm 22 years old, and I just started my first position in industrial controlled cybersecurity. So like everyone else, I want to say thank you for the inspiration you've been um, in technology. It's been nice to look at you and what you're doing and see kind of the issues and some of the possibilities in that realm. Um, but for political questions, because I'm assuming that's more appropriate for the well, venue. And, and to be clear, like, the, the kind of questions that are, that are, are I, the, the best questions to ask are, are what, what do you think people out there would, would like to know the answer to, or if, you, you know, if, there's, if there's a comment or a question that you think maybe millions of people would like to know, that's, that's what we're optimizing for here. Yeah. Um, okay, so on that note, I kind of want to go back to the robotics and AI technology developments. Um, I think that regulating the technology itself is a vain effort, um, and you've obviously worked in the development a lot. Um, can you speak to kind of what you've seen about human-centric development? Because I think that might be the only thing that's going to protect us from things getting out of hand. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I totally understand the question, but I, I, I do think that any, any given technology that's developed, uh, the, the goal of it should be to help humanity um, and to bring joy to people um, and help people. And, and uh, so... That's, and, and, and I do, to be clear, I do think there is a role for regulators, you know, just like there is a role for referees in a sports game. Like, every sports game has, has referees, you know. Uh, tonight's Steelers game, they got referees. And, and it's a better game for having referees. Um, but you don't want to have so many refs on the field, you know, that, that, that the running back can't even get through them. You know, it's like, it's like I, can't, I can't catch the ball because I have this, like, 20 referees in my way. Um, that, that's the situation we have in, in, in industry uh, today, is, is far too many refs on the field, sometimes more refs than players, you know, and if, if you saw that in a sports game, you're like, this is crazy. Um, but but, but I, I'm, I'm not, I want to be clear, like, I'm not saying no regulation, I'm just saying sensible regulation, you want the right number of referees in the field, but not any more than that. So, yeah. Hi, Elon. Thank you for everything you've done recently to help save our country from ruin. It's really appreciated. Um, You're most welcome. There's a rumor... And, 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 and th yep. thank, thank, thank you for doing things to help the country, too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 
There's a rumor floating around that you have interest in uh, investing in our city, which I hope is true. And if so, let me know where I can submit my resume. <laughs> um, well, who, I'm a big fan of Pennsylvania, and I think there's, you know, there's a good chance that uh, one of my companies does something in the future in Pennsylvania. Go, go see him. <laughs> Uh, who we vote for in our office will ultimately shape the future of our country. If that statement is true, the most important members of our society that we can think about when voting in elections would be our children and our grandchildren. Since they are not eligible to vote, and we have others voting for selfish reasons, would you be in, what would be your thoughts on reshaping voter eligibility? Some sort of criteria or guidelines that must be met in order to vote. I can give you an example. Um, you mean like changing... Uh, hmm. Being an active tax voter. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, frankly, I'd, I'd be happy if, if, if it was just that, uh, you know, citizens voted. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd call that a win. You know, um, if, if we could just make sure that, that, that only legal citizens can vote, which is how it's supposed to be, I'd, I'd say that would be quite a, quite a victory compared to where we are right now. Um, so uh, just, you know, and, 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 and I think having more transparency on, on elections, maximum transparency on elections, and as, as I've said before, I think we should uh, not allow voting machines of any kind. Um, so, um, you know, I, 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 you know I, I've, I've been programming computers since I was nine years old, and, uh, you know, I, I know how easy it is to, you know, get a line of software wrong or, or hack a computer. Um, and so uh, I think the last thing we want to do is, ha is have electronic voting machines. Uh, we want paper ballots in person with ID. And, and, and actually, it sort of, sort of, in, in terms of, an, of a real AI danger that hopefully is not uh, there this, this year, but will certainly be a danger in the future, is that uh, advanced AI will be super good at hacking computers. And so if, 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 those, if you have uh, voting machines that are connected to the internet and you've got super advanced AI uh, that can, it, it can, it can you know, potentially affect those machines, I think that's very dangerous. Uh, th so we, we actually, and, I, and so what I'm saying is that I'm only someone who favors technology. I'm super, you know, 21st section, I, I'm 21st century technology boy right here. Um, and I'm saying no, no machines for voting. Yeah. Hi, Elon. Uh, my name's Andy. I'm a technologist. I consider myself uh, uh, like you in that way. Um, sadly, I missed you at the RoboTaxi event last week. I actually got a ticket. I uh, couldn't make it. Looked amazing. Super excited for the future. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, on to my welcome. question. I was disappointed by the current administration's lack of inclusion of you and Tesla at the EV summit. Yeah. Uh, te Tesla is a truly great American company that should be cherished for its technology that's advanced humankind and provided a number, a large number of American jobs. My question is, how can the Trump administration kindle the growth of the automotive, EV, and autonomous tech industries? Well, I, honestly, I go back to uh, minimizing, uh, go, you know, go government in intervention. Um, you know, in, in general, I, 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 I'm, I'm very much a sm in favor of small government um, and that, like, there shouldn't be uh, incentives, tax breaks, or for, for anything at all. That, that would be like, no incentives, tax breaks, for anything at all. Whether it's, that, that includes uh, oil and gas, electric cars, no, nothing. No incentives for nothing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it, it, so the, like the, the, the tax code is, is, is like, I mean, you, you know, you, you could fill this room with the, the tax code. It's, it's like so called, I think only, only an AI could even understand the tax code, maybe. Um, you know, I, I think we want to have a, a, a tax code you can actually read both as a human, um, you know, instead of having like, a pro, I, there might be, it might be upwards of a million different tax breaks or, or tax loopholes or whatever. It's, it's in, insane. Um, so, 
you know, I, I, like I said, I think we, we want minimal government uh, action and maximum freedom for the people, and that is what leads to the highest level of prosperity. Yeah. Given how, given how punitive the SEC has been towards crypto under this administration, do you envision the XRP ledger being incorporated into the financial institutions in the future? Well, I, I certainly cannot speak to any, any specific uh, uh, crypto, uh, but um, you know, I, do, I do think that uh, the sort of uh, cryptocurrency is a, a, an interesting and probably valuable bulwark uh, against uh, a centralized control. Um, so, you know, I, and uh, this is definitely not an endorsement or lack of endorsement for XRP. Um, but, but I do, I do think crypto, uh, by, by its very nature, uh, is, um, is, it helps uh, with individual freedom. All right. So, Mr. Moss, thank you very much for coming. Also, uh, as a Pittsburgh fan, I hope to see you at tonight's game. That'd be pretty incredible. Um, I, so I, gotta get, I, I, I actually would love to be there. I've got to get back and see my kids, speaking oh. of kids. Okay, so, so yeah. my question, uh, as well as I'm sure many millions of Americans, um, I'm a young entrepreneur and voter, we are spending so much money in a lot of useless ways, I feel, um, in the government spending. So a lot of that also is very irritating as a voter, uh, is the money that we are spending overseas in not helping our own country, like in North Carolina and down south right now. I want to know, is it possible when you get in here into the government of efficiency, how are you going to help us with spending money efficiently and using our tax money well? Yeah, well, I think the, the step number one is spend a lot less of it. Um, so uh, it, it's like the, the first order of business to, is to say any given expenditure, uh, we should, tr I think we, we want to zero budget the thing. Say like, let's start from scratch, n n not because because it it doesn't make sense to reduce a, a foolish expenditure by ten percent if it should be zero, and I bet there's I, not a bet. I know there's a lot of lot of things that are super wasteful. I mean, look at the sort of forty two billion dollars that's been been allocated for rural rural broadband, um, and you know, and SpaceX won like a quarter of it, and then they rescinded that uh, contract for political reasons, and uh, in, and in fact. It would have meant if, if, if a bunch of those terminals would have been in the affected hurricane areas, so that could have cost lives. That's so that that kind of political lawfare is is unconscionable. Um, and you know how much how, how many people have been connected by that 42 billion? Zero. Literally zero. zero. So I would say that program should be zero, because <laughs> value for money is zero. Hi, Elon. I'm 20 years old, and instead of going to college, I decided to start my own business. Your innovativeness inspires me. What is a piece of advice you would have for someone like me or me to be as innovative as you are in business? Um, well, uh, I didn't really set out to be innovative. Um, you, know, you know, I think, I think you want to set out with, with saying, like, what, what's a useful product or service that people you think people would like, and and then try to make that thing real, um, and I think as long as you're, uh, you know, doing an honest day's work and you know providing useful products and services to people, I think you should be very proud of that. You know, I have a huge respect for anyone who puts in an honest day's work, help you know, that contributing to society. So that's what matters. Good afternoon, Elon. As somebody who is directly involved in the pioneering of space travel, what is your perspective on the suppression of advanced technologies under UAP crash retrieval programs and other black projects such as Immaculate Constellation that have the potential to fundamentally change human society? Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with those programs, uh, but I mean, I certainly think if there, if there are technologies that can be helpful, the, the government's aware of it. Uh, we should obviously provide that technology to, to the people. Um, so 
I, I should say that you know, people often ask me, you know, do I believe in aliens? Um, and um, I, I said, well, I was one, you know, according to Homeland Security until I got my, you know, I got, it literally said alien registration card. I'm like, cool. Um, so, um, but I mean, thus far, I, I have not personally, I'm not aware of any evidence for aliens on Earth. I, I'm not saying they don't, they're not here, but I have not seen any evidence for aliens. Um, and uh, it, for our Starlink constellation, we have never uh, had to maneuver around an alien spacecraft even once. Um, and we've got 6,000 satellites up there. So, I mean, they're very subtle, if is what I'm saying, these aliens, you know. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I think if there's like, I don't know, if there's interesting stuff that's, uh, that the government's aware of that American people would, would find interesting or useful, we should obviously make that uh, known. We should publish it. <laughs> so thank you. Um, yeah. Hey, Elon. My name is Jordan Scott Gilbert. I'm a Broadway producer and movie director who creates conservative content and Christian content for stage and film. As you know, a lot of conservatives and Christians have been blacklisted from Hollywood and Broadway. Uh, so my question to you is, would you consider creating an entertainment company to also save art as well as Western civilization? And what role do you think art plays in protecting freedom of speech and our constitutional freedoms? Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're, you're making uh, art um, that, that, is, uh, uh, that is on the right. I mean, it's because I think, uh, and, you know, we have to say, like, wh where, where do kids and adults, wh where do they, how do they get informed of what's going on? What, what, uh, you know, what, what moral underpinnings are conveyed in, in, the, in the art that is produced? Um, and there should be more... Uh, uh, people that are that are making interesting art, whether it's plays, movies, books, uh, that are on the right, because uh, it's overwhelmingly on the left. Uh, so I'm glad you're doing this, and I, I, I hope uh, more people do it. I mean, I, I, I'd appreciate just art that's in the center, frankly. That'd be quite nice. It's like uh, it's like like I, I enjoy playing video. People ask me like what my hobbies are. It's like well, you know, I'm a technology nerd, so I like playing video games. Um, so, so um, and, and it's like, it's really annoying when video, you, you, video game gets interrupted by some DEI woke bullshit. And I'm like, Jesus, I just, I was like, I was playing a video game here. Can you just leave the video games alone? It's, it, it, you know, you, you don't want to do things that, that, that damage art. Um, so it breaks you out of the story. So. Hi, Elon. My name is Nolan Duncan. And it's my goal to one day make our region proud by being just as successful and driven as you. One thing we do share, though, is the love and pride of our country. Anyway, I'm a small business owner, a recently sworn in firefighter, all while having a full time job, which I may not have after today. Really? Why yeah. not? Uh, I'm late. I'm 30 minutes late. <laughs> oh, oh, geez, okay. But I, I'm doing this because I love our country. And I love all of you who are fighting to make this country great again. So let's keep it up. Yes. <laughs> jo <laughs> Jobs are all a dime a dozen anymore. I'll find a new one if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. <laughs> I began this journey a year ago with the intent to become self-sufficient and take control of my destiny as an entrepreneur. However, it is utterly apparent that our government, rather the incompetents who run it, are self-sabotaging our future generations. And at this point, it is imperative that we protect our republic with safer and transparent elections. This is rather... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I absolutely, very much agree. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> this is a rather novel concept to many in this room. But for the future, and since you are actively involved in cryptocurrency, I'm not what actively I, involved in crypto, to be clear. No? Okay. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I, I, you know, uh, you know I'm, 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 def I'm, I'm actually not actively involved in crypto. Oh, no? Uh, okay. Well, so Doge, it, Dogecoin. All you know, I, I, make, <laughs> I make Dogecoin jokes and, and stuff because I just, I kind of like Dogecoin because it's uh, got the best sense of humor and it has dogs and memes and I, I, I love all those things. There you go. So. So anyway, what are your thoughts on implementing the blockchain for future elections? And also, as a cr content creator, 
X has so many, so much potential. Would you consider making X a dominant force against video and streaming platforms such as YouTube and Twitch to compete against these ridiculous policies that empower content creators to their fullest? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're, we definitely want to have uh, uh, X. Uh, well, it does. It does currently enable, uh, you know, up to, up to four-hour videos, um, and we'll we'll soon be offering, you know, four K resolution. Um, and we're, we're uh, c continuing to improve our streaming capability for uh, gamers that want to stream or anyone that wants to stream content. Um, so, uh, you know, we've, we've made a lot of progress and, and, and hopefully we can offer an alternative. Uh, the, the X app uh, is now available on, on big TVs, so you can actually watch, uh, watch stuff on TVs. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just generally good to have competition. I mean, competition is what competition uh, keeps companies honest. Yeah, thank you. First off, I wanted to thank you for saving democracy and all your contributions to civilization. Um, thank you. My question is, I'm 24 years old. What key advice would you give to the younger generation wanting to start a family? Uh, I mean, my advice regarding starting a family is, is start immediately. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think people people worry too much uh, about having kids, and sometimes it's difficult to make ends meet and whatnot. Uh, but honestly, there's, there's there's really no time like the present. Just ha have kids, you'll you won't be sorry. It'll work out. Hi, Elon. Thanks for being here today. Um, <laughs> with your, well, with your uh, Department of Efficiency, uh, how far back do you think we're going to have to go in order to right the wrongs that are in this country? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's, there's certainly a lot of work for a Department of Government Efficiency. Um, and uh, there will be immense opposition, obviously, to making government more efficient from entrenched interests that currently benefit fr from, uh, you know, sucking away vast amounts of taxpayer money. They will not like the fact that they're not getting it anymore. Uh, they will f fight tooth and nail. So, uh, but it's got to be done. And like I said, we're, we're going to um, aim to you know, reduce government spending, get government out of people's lives as much as possible, and restore uh, freedom and liberty. Mr. Musk. My name is Allie Offman, and I'm secretary of the Carnegie Mellon College Republicans. All right. Before I ask my quick question, I would love to welcome your son to join our club next year. Sounds good. <laughs> Second, I just wanted to ask, um, I wanted to ask you, what was the driving problem that got you into politics, and what was that breaking point that made you really want to get into politics? Yeah, well, as I said, I, I, I really um, would prefer not to be in politics at all. Uh, and uh, the, the, the reason that I uh, have stepped into the political arena this time is because I think the stakes are extremely fundamental. I think uh, democracy is on the line. I think the Constitution's on the line. Um, I, and I, I, I fear that uh, if Trump does not win, we're going to be, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have a single party state. And it's going to be like California. Uh, but, but actually worse than California, because the one thing that keeps California from going uh, even further than they, they do go is that people can move out of California and still be in America. But if you've got no place to move, then it's going to be much worse than California. Um, and that's the danger that we face. Uh, so an, a, a, a sort of an, an, an oppressive totalitarian state that uh, has extreme restrictions on uh, freedom of speech, uh, that uh, you know c continues extreme overregulation that just basically uh, makes government uh, even bigger than it is today uh, and uh, takes away the liberty of of the people. So it was that's something I wanted to do, but I, I felt it was it was critical t to do it, or America is not going to be America. So. 
fight you on? Over 100 years ago, Nikola Tesla dreamed of delivering free and unlimited energy, not just to the people of the United States, but to the people of the world. And he was up against a dirty machine, you know, same machine that we're fighting today, mm -hmm. same machine that's been suppressing, suiciding inventors for decades, as evidenced by, you know, Secrecy Invention Act of 1951. We need somebody that has the wallet to not care what people think and not be bullied around while having the guts to give the finger to the adversaries. And whether it's through government efficiency or private sector, uh, if you're taking suggestions, I would uh, encourage you to pursue that avenue to give the people of the earth you know, something clean, renewable, efficient, and uh, imagine what kind of rockets you could build with ethereal energy. So if you would like to discuss it more, I'm getting sushi afterwards if you want to <laughs> join me, but I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, well, like I said, I mean, I, I think we want to get uh, government out of people's lives and uh, give people their, their liberty and freedom back um, and allow them to keep more of their hard-earned money and... Uh, I think that's what leads to prosperity and uh, a happier people. Uh, so that's that's what we're going to aim for. So, so I'll, I'll just take, take a couple more questions and call, uh, call it a day. Hi, Elon. I'm Edwin. I believe that you are the Benjamin Franklin of our times. And thank you for unapologetically being you. My question is, on several occasions in your life, you have bet the farm on highly ambitious and almost improbable goals. In spite of well-intentioned advices from friends, family, and even your idols like Neil Armstrong saying, don't do it, Elon. Yeah. Uh, most people would break under that kind of pressure. So how did you get them, or how do you get uh, the mental fortitude to listen to all of that advice, process it, uh, realize you're probably going to fail, and go ahead and do it uh, in spite of the uh, fear? Yeah, I mean, when starting SpaceX and Tesla, you know, people said, uh, you're, you're probably going to fail, and I agreed with them. I said, yeah, I think the probability of success is less than 10%. Uh, but, uh, but I felt if, if, if we didn't try to do something radical in space and, and with electric, electric cars, uh, then, you know, not, nothing was happening. Like, the, the, the existing big companies uh, were not innovating. Like, the, the, the cost of access to space was actually increasing every year in the U.S., not decreasing. Um, and th there was no, you know, it, it was basically, um, we're, we're, we're doing less and less every year in, in space exploration, not, not more. And so I was like, well, if, you know, even if, even if it's like a 1% chance of SpaceX succeeding, that's still better than nothing. Um, so, you know, I was like, you know, the, the people tell me this joke so many times, like, what, what's the best way to make a small fortune in the space industry is to start with a large one. And, and I, was, I was like, I, so, so then um, when people you know, would ask, tell me that joke, I, I would say, well, I was trying to figure out how to make a, small for, a large fortune to a small one. And like, how did you know? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, so, so it wasn't with the expectation of success that, that uh, we started SpaceX and Tesla. It was with the, with the expectation of failure. Um, but we felt this, it was important enough, nonetheless, to give it our best shot. And we just barely made it. You know, SpaceX, the first three flights didn't, didn't succeed. But the fourth one did. And if that fourth one had, had failed, I was out of money and the company would not exist. So. Um, and, and, and it, you know, it, 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 was, it was the same thing for Tesla. You know, same thing for Tesla. Um, you know, 2008 was, it was a really tough year because that's when we had the, the, the third rocket failure. And, uh, and the, the auto industry was busy going bankrupt. Um, you know, uh, GM and Chrysler went bankrupt in you know, early, early 2009, and they're, they're busy going bankrupt in late 2008. Um, and you know, in the case of Tesla, we, we closed the financing round of Tesla, um, and I, I gave all the money that I had left. Um, uh, and we closed that financing round uh, in the last hour of the last day that it was possible. It was. Uh, uh, around 5 p.m. Christmas Eve 2008. And if, if that round had not closed in that, in that uh, call, Tesla would have bounced payroll two days after Christmas. So.
Good afternoon, Elon. I thank you for saving my son's life at the age of 25 in his little red Y, Tesla, going 77 miles an hour on the turnpike. A deer jumped. The cabin knew there was an impact. It lifted the front hood. So the, the deer was not in my son's lap. So thank you for that. Hey, welcome. Secondly, my question is... Yeah, we, 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 we do actually... The, 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 top, the top priority for Tesla uh, design and engineering is actually safety. Uh, so that's and safety. that's why he bought yeah. your S, and now he has your Cybertruck, and he is 25, and he, you are his inspiration, and he was to be here, but he didn't get the ticket. Mom did. All right. So my question is, as an educator for over 20 years, and for the rights to bear arms... Why in the public schools do we not have a team of concealed to carry professional staff, faculty on all colleges, public schools that are completely under confidentiality and highly trained to protect our schools? And if we cannot protect our children, then can you design equipment that will allow our schools and our campuses to be freely safe of any man or woman who thinks that they are going to take us down. Sure. Uh, well, you know, to be, to, to be, I, I don't actually have an answer for everything. Uh, <laughs> so I do, I'm doing my best here to just, you know, answer questions as best I can and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully get most of them right and probably some wrong, but, um, and then correct the ones that are wrong. But uh, yeah, I do think there are things, steps we can take to improve uh, safety on campus and on schools. Um, and I think uh, if, if, if there are highly trusted teachers uh, who are willing to, uh, and we need to make sure obviously they're highly trusted and very, very capable, uh, who are willing to uh, uh, have firearms in order to protect the, the kids, I think we should probably let them do it. All right, so I'll just, I'll just do two, this, this question and one more and, and then we'll call it a day. Hi, I'm one of the Pennsylvania conservatives in the uh, Pennsylvania Democratic conservatives in the room. My father and brother have been in the House of Representatives for 24 and 22 years. Pro-life, pro-gun, pro-military, pro-First Amendment, pro-Second Amendment. My problem is um, my vote didn't get counted. I voted for Trump in 2016. I voted for him in 2020. I get, received this letter in the mail from Harrisburg saying that my vote did not get counted. Uh, and what I, concerns I, I, me... Actually, I'd like to understand more about that. So, so how, how did that work? Did I that don't get, know. Okay. I, I work the polls. I've always worked the polls. I go for conservative Democrats. I go on a federal level for the Republicans. And like I said, I've always gone to the polls. So to find out that my vote has not been counted when I voted for Trump in both elections concerns me because my vote for my own brother didn't get counted as well. So I think that's happening to a lot of us. There's no, there's no explanation? There's no explanation. I mean, if I didn't get this letter, I would not have known that my vote wasn't counted. So I think that's happened huh. to a lot of us because well, that, we are standing with Trump. That seems really Trump. crazy. Uh, oh, I know. I mean, it seems like... The you could have it. If they say it's not counted, <laughs> they got to give a reason for that. There's, you know? no, there's no reason. No one seems to even, when I call, they're like, we don't know. We don't, we don't, we don't know anything. I just work here. I'm like, huh. Well, I think we definitely want to understand how widespread this is. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely use the X platform to publicize anything that you think is, is an issue. Um, you know, if, 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 if we, we just, you know, we, we, we want to investigate anything that is, uh, that's, that is, messed up and well, that's that sounds pretty messed up at, at a minimum they should tell you why your, your vote wasn't counted i mean was there something that you didn't fill out or or, or what you know oh, no, i went to the i went to the polls and i signed i've done it for you know 40 years now so yeah it's strange but i think it, i'm one of probably hundreds of thousands that has voiced has been silenced well i think it would be good to, to just count up like how many people were, are in your position um and for sure, that, that, does, that does seem messed up. Like, the state should be required to tell you exactly why uh, it wasn't counted. And uh, so, you know, th that you at least understand there was an error in the form, there was something. Because it, it, it was just saying it wasn't counted with no explanation is totally unacceptable. So. How you doing, Elon? Good, how's it going? My name's Logic. I'm a creative professional out of Pittsburgh. 
and I represent my people, my community, and some of the questions that we may have and some of the insight that I have from me personally, being a single father here in this city, also making it through the change in circumstances of the economy as it becomes worse than I've ever known it to be. And the seriousness of this election, you know, me, I'm not one that really believes in voting myself, but I feel like I do not want to leave anything to happenstance in this election. And I know that we need to get somebody who's really going to be intelligent with our leadership. So, you know, there's a lot of things I would like to talk about, but I do have many ideas. I like what you're doing right now, and I commend you on putting yourself out here, you know, uh, to make these changes and to take these risks that matter. Uh, my name is Logic, L-H-A-G-I-C dot com. You can find out more about me and what I do, and that's all I want to say. All right, well, thank you. Uh, but please, please, please do everything you can to convince people to vote and, and register to vote. Uh, all right, I'll do two more questions, and then uh, I, 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 I got to get back to see my kids. Honestly, that's, that's the, that is the, I, that's where I'm going right after this. So um, I'll make it really fast. I want to get, get to see you before bedtime as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. This opportunity is way cool. Thank you very much. Emotional conversations often polarize into win-lose dynamics. And there's like an individual focus or thinking where systems thinking, especially when it comes to the relationship system, suggests that there's unseen forces, possibly evolutionary, shaping how natural living systems like humanity manage tension. How might AI help navigate these charged conversations, especially if it's built by the, with the same blind spots we all have? I'm, I, honestly, I'm, I'm not sure. I think uh, AI, I think, will it'll be vastly smarter than humans, and I think it probably will help. Like I said, it's 80% likely to be helpful, maybe 90. Um, and, uh, you know, I can certainly see it being very helpful with... with uh, you know, medicine and uh, helping people understand, get, get healthy and whatnot. Um, so, but it's not a panacea. It'll, it'll you know, it's, it's, it is a double-edged sword. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure I have a, a great answer to that, uh, except we just need to pay close attention to AI and, um, set, you know, ring the alarm bell if we see that it's going in a bad direction. Thank you. L last question. Thank you, Elon. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for your courage and for everything you've done for America. Um, my, my question is pertaining to the voting machines this election. Uh, there are numerous features. This is an exhaustive, a switch feature, a multiplication feature. Been waiting to ask you this since 2020. Are you confident that this is a battle that can be won? Um, are there plans in place? Are there protections in place? Have you talked to President Trump about this with your technological proficiency and higher level of knowledge? I, I think the, 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 the best way to address this, you know, in any potential fraud, and I, I don't know what's real and what's not real, um, but I've made my position clear that we should not have machines involved. We should have paper ballots uh, in person with ID. That's, that's the... That's the sure thing. Um, and as, especially uh, as we get to an AI future, because like I said, the AI could, could hack the voting machines, and then we, don't, we, we wouldn't even know what's going on. Um, we don't, do not want voting machines connected to the internet or electronic in any way whatsoever. So um, can't emphasize that enough. Uh, now, with respect to this election, uh, I think it, it, any, any sort of voting um, you know, concerns that people have should be posted on the X platform and on, on every platform, um, and you know, be very loud about it if you have any, any concerns, uh, so that they can, it, you know, like the, the brighter the light we shine on any voting issues, the, the less likely there is to be cheating. Um, th then, and then the other thing is that is, is to win by such a margin that even if there is cheating, the margin is, too, is, is so great that you beat the cheat. So. Well, with that, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's been an honor speaking to you, and uh, I enjoyed the questions. And uh, let's just go ultra hardcore. Remember, uh, 
only have until tomorrow night to get people registered. So please think you've got one goal, get people registered by midnight tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>